Welcome to the kickoff of the fourth season of Inside EKU Sports, and we'll begin with Mark Elder talking about the 107th season of EKU football. And I know you're really excited about what this season could bring. Absolutely. There's a ton of promise and, and optimism about the team this year. Uh, we've got a lot back as far as uh, talented players. We're the deepest team, most talented team, and, and the most aligned team from a culture standpoint that we've been. Uh, we've had an awesome offseason from January on. The, 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 the offseason's gone really well. Um, we've come together, and I think there's a tremendous amount of belief amongst each other that we're going to be a very good team this year. Coming off a 7-4 and four season, last year winning the last four or five of the last six you play 12 this year a lot of them on the road but a good start on Thursday night against Valparaiso to get you going Yes, no, Valpo's coming to town Thursday, and I think it's going to be a, an awesome atmosphere. Uh, the, the fan base will be out and supporting us, but it, it brings a lot of, of uh, difficulty with it as well because it's the first game of the year. Uh, there's going to be a lot of seniors that were on film a year ago that are not on film now, and then also they got new coaching staff. So uh, we're going to face a new offense, a new defense, a new special team scheme from what they did a year ago. Uh, so that's led a lot of preparation because you're, you're not only watching the Valpo, Parazzo film, but you're watching the film of, of where these coaches came from. Uh, so a lot of adversity we got to overcome with that stuff, but uh, our guys have been focused, think we'll be ready to go. There are four quarterbacks back, three that played last year and transfer Connor Blount. Where are you at quarterback as you go into game one? Yeah, Connor's uh, won the job during camp. Uh, feel great about the room collectively. Think that uh, really all four guys are playing their best ball right now. Um, every guy's playing, the guys that are returning, they're all playing better than, than we did at any point in time last year. So really pleased with the group as a whole. But Connor had a really nice uh, fall camp and, and came out as the, the guy that uh, is going to be leading us out there against Valpo. You have a new offensive coordinator, a little bit of a new offense. Explain to the fans what this offense will be and how it may be a little different than what we've seen in the past. Yeah, Adam Austin came in from Midwestern State Division II school in Texas where he's coordinator there for six years and coached the quarterbacks there for eight. And uh, it's, it's a very exciting offense. It's an RPO, run, run pass option offense. So uh, we're going to spread the ball out a little bit more. We, we will be more balanced. You know, a year ago we were very, very run heavy. Uh, we're going to certainly be very balanced. We're going to get the ball into our playmakers' hands in space. Uh, we're still going to run the football very, very effectively, but we are going to get the ball out on the perimeter more more than we did a year ago, um, anticipating it being an exciting offense that, that, that will be very productive. Uh, a little thin, a couple positions defensively, but uh, overall a pretty veteran defense that you'll throw onto the field when we start this season. Yes, we've got a number of guys back on our defense, player-wise. From a schematic standpoint, we're going to be very, very similar to what we were. We've got almost everybody back on a, uh, our defensive staff. But we've got uh, a lot of experience, uh, a lot of playing time, and guys that played very, very well a year ago that are back. Uh, there are some guys that, that are going to step up into new roles, new, more expanded roles, but uh, feel really good about our defense. Um, you know, yeah, as always, you got to stay healthy. Um, but I think that we're, we've got a good group and, and we're going to be able to play over 20 guys on our defense. And your special teams, everybody's back there. and we don't have, There's no changes to be made right now. Right. At the, at the specialist position, we've got everybody back. Uh, obviously, they're, they're a piece of the puzzle, an important piece, a critical piece. But uh, we'll have a lot of other faces running around on those units. But, uh, but the specialists are all back from a year ago. I take it like almost every team on the FCS level, the one thing that you can't control that could derail something, fingers crossed, are injuries. But if everything goes well and you can stay fairly healthy, uh, this season sets up to be one where you can make something happen. Uh, I, there's a lot of excitement about us being able to be a very good team. Uh, this is the deepest team that we've had. Injuries are certainly going to be a part of it. Um, y y really, is, as a coach, you just hope that you don't have uh, a concentrated group of injuries. Right. That's the deal. I mean, you're never going to – if you're expecting to go a, a season without injuries, um, y you know, you're, you should play the lottery if that works <laughs> out because that's just not – I mean, it's a violent sport. That's just not going to happen. You, you really hope that you – 
you avoid a concentration of injuries, you know, one particular position just right. getting devastated with three, four, five injuries. That can really derail things for us if that were to happen. But um, I think we've got a deep team. We've got a lot of guys that can play at a high level. As long as we don't have a concentration at one particular spot, even an injury here and there, uh, we should be able to overcome. Okay, good luck on Thursday night, Mark. Thank you, Stutz. All right, we'll be talking with Mark Edler throughout the season about EKU football, and it is Valparaiso, 7 o'clock at Roy Kidd Stadium on Thursday night. Hope to see you out there. We'll have our radio call at WCYO. That's online at ekusports.com, and also coverage online on ESPN+. Coming up next, we'll talk to the volleyball coach. She's new, but... She knows EKU, and we'll explain that. But first, 2,400 new students on campus here at EKU. We'll see how they spent their first few days on the Campus Beautiful. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. You have to get hands-on, get real-world experience, and discover who you are meant to be. Be a crime fighter. Be a visionary. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with a slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Welcome back. Another team about ready to start their season. It's the EKU volleyball team and a new head coach, John Fouch. But you know the program you were under, now retired Lori Duncan for five years. So how's the transition been? The transition has been very easy. Um, it's been nice that I've been here for five years and seeing how things work behind the scenes. So that part has been very simple. And I think for me, knowing the team as well, um, it was easy for me to kind of gauge them and their personalities. But it's been going great, and so it's been fun to kind of now be in that head role and kind of teach what I wanted to preach, and um, they're enjoying it so far, so it's been great. How will you play that may be different than the, the style you played last season? We're incorporating a faster offense, um, and so keeping that tempo 
that we can beat other teams because you see teams nowadays and they're running really fast tempoed offenses and we've kind of been slowed to get in there and kind of defending that and so we're incorporating a lot of new defensive systems and a lot of offensive systems so hopefully we can see that translate into our first weekend coming up. Things always happen in college. You're going to lose players because they graduate. And you lost two tremendous ones in Cassie Knutson at the net, who was you know, Spiker, and then and then your libero, who was uh, uh, a tremendous academic uh, student athlete as well, and Chloe Roges. So uh, I know you can't replace them, but how do you fill those holes on the court? Like you said, we can't replace them. And, you know, Cassie was a uh, last year all OVC and Chloe the year before that defensive player of the year. And so um, we brought in two new transfers and one's in the defensive role and one's on the opposite side like Cassie was. And bringing in kind of, kind of upperclassmen that can help in that area as well that have that experience of playing already at the college level, I think that's gonna help us tremendously. And then bringing in three freshmen, um, got a couple on the pins and I think that they can help us kind of just raise our game. So I think we've got a good void to kind of fill that role that they kind of left behind. but. Like you said, they're not replaceable. So There's a lot of invitationals or tournaments you mm -hmm. play early, and you will start in the Charlotte Invitational this, this coming weekend. Uh, ten games away from home before you start at home. What do you want to see in these first ten non-conference games? I think I just want to see how our team has been progressing over preseason. Um, I've kind of kept our travel pretty regional. So travel's tough on kids, especially when you're going coast to coast or you're just going all over the place. And so we're trying to manage it in the sense that we can be healthy and be um, going into a preseason match, just like ready to play and our mind is right. And so I'm excited to see all the things that we've incorporated this preseason kind of play off. You played at San Diego State. You were an honorable mention All-America one year. Uh, having played the game, do you feel like it translates well to the current student athlete? And how have you tried to use that as a, as a conduit to get, get in touch with your player? I think being knowledgeable about it is tremendous you know b being a player and knowing how it is like during preseason those double days I know the struggle that you have to go through I know the hard work that you have to put in and so um, the girls are really you know receptive to what I have to say and having a staff that has played as well really helps me too and so um, I know it's helping our girls and just really learning the game at a different level from different areas that we have learned it. And so I think it's translating very well. You had a losing season last year. I know it's not all about wins and losses early, but getting a couple of wins, has you would think that would really help kind of just mm -hmm. turn the, the, the feeling around about what we're going to do this season. Yeah, I've scheduled our preseason very um, pretty even keeled with us this year. I think that there are some teams that, you know, can really push our buttons, but I also think that there are some teams that we can really try to get some wins out of it. And, you know, I'm trying to be positive and I'm trying to, you know, incorporate some things because, you know, it is tough coming off of a losing season. So trying to really push our kids to have that positive mindset and just kind of see that the light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm really excited to see what we do this preseason because I think we can come out with some wins. All right. Good luck. Thank you. John Fouch, the head coach of the EKU volleyball team. Here's what's ahead this weekend. It all starts at noon on Friday in the Charlotte Invitational against Kent State. Then at four o'clock same day against Gardner Webb and then the host Charlotte on Saturday. Day. By the way, the Curdles will finally get home in mid-September and we'll have those games as they progress out at Alumni Coliseum. That's it for volleyball, but another sport on the women's side is already underway. We'll check in with the EKU soccer team after this. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Matt Kozanuk is the head coach in year one of the EKU women's soccer team. Off to a start of 0-2, uh, but that really doesn't tell the story, does it? Because you guys have been so close to winning both games. Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit unfair. And I think people that don't know that maybe are looking from the outside, um, I think 
would assume that we're really, really disappointed. And, and obviously, I'm not thrilled to be owned to, and, and none of our family members are thrilled to be owned to. But I think it's important to note in the way in which we're approaching each game and the way we prepare for the games and, and then our execution and our intensity, for the most part, in both of those games has been um, good good so far. Well, the home opener was against Chattanooga on Sunday, and you had 16 shots, five on goal. You had eight corners. They had one. So the chances were there. As you break it down and you talk to the team, what needs to happen to make chances become goals? Yeah, so I, I think if you look at those numbers, 16 chances and five of them being on net, like that ratio isn't good enough. And so we're talking about service into the box and where does that service need to go? And then movement in the box, where do you need to be to be able to finish those chances when we do get them? Because I thought we were dangerous and I thought we were hard to defend. Uh, we just weren't clinical enough and we, weren't, uh, we didn't execute with enough authority in the final third. You play 11 to start, one's in goal, and Zoe Aguirre. And then, of the position players, you made 10 different substitutions coming in. In other words, a total of 21 people set foot on the field. So you've developed some depth, and so where are you there? Are you searching for combinations, connections, or, or is it just because you, know, you don't want people to play 90 minutes if they don't have to because you want energy. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's a combination of all of those different aspects. So I think there's, you're trying to manage bodies for the end of the season to make sure that we're hitting a peak at the right time and not plateauing early in the season and being too tired to kind of follow through uh, in conference play and then, and then in the tournament. I think it's a, also a piece of finding personalities and balance who complements each other in the middle of the field, um, who works best together, who communicates the best together. And then also we press like crazy. And you can't do that with 11 players. You have to go deeper in your bench than most teams to be able to sustain that, that work rate and that bite and that fight. You were an assistant at Cincinnati for five years, also an assistant uh, on the men's side at several schools, I think three schools. So now you're the head coach. How, how is it the, the dynamic different for you, Matt? Oh, you sleep a lot less. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are parts that are great and there are parts that are just different. And part of being the boss is being responsible for everything and making sure that everybody's on the same page. And I think that's probably the biggest adjustment for me is just the responsibility of every piece of the program beneath me. Um, but I think it's something that I've loved so far and I've loved the experience in being here as a part of this family. Up to Michigan for a game Thursday and then back home for a Sunday game. So the good news about soccer is you get to play twice a week yeah. so you can erase the loss or, or try to build some momentum. So what are you looking for here in these next two non-conference games for me? your team. Finishing our chances, mm -hmm. right? Like being deadly in the box. Um, I think that's something that's a continued evolution and a continued growth of our family is just finishing the chances that we're creating because we are creating them and we are hard to play against. Uh, but having that, that killer instinct and the movement in the box to finish those chances is just the difference at this point. You play uh, against Oakland up in Rochester, Michigan first. Yeah. What about Oakland? I think they're similar in terms of the way that they play to a couple of the opponents that we've played against. Uh, I think they're a talented team, uh, but I think they're a team that if we play the way that we want to, um, I think we're going to, to give them areas of struggle, um, and I think we'll be able to kind of nullify their attack. But I think it's one that if you uh, take any game off in Division I, uh, I think you're going to get burnt. So we have to make sure that we are mentally focused and switched on from the very first second. Okay, good luck this week. We'll see you back home on, on Sunday as Thank well. You. Matt Kozinuk is the head coach of the EKU women's soccer team again Thursday against Oakland, then back home for a 1 o'clock match on Sunday against Milwaukee. And that will do it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. Of course, you can keep up with EKU Athletics on all of our social media platforms that you see there on the screen. We'll see you out at the football stadium on Thursday and out at the soccer field on Sunday. And as always, go Big E.